Hello, we are Group 9, and today we will make the presentation about Father Lee Tasok's life under Salesian perspective. Before we get to know about Father Lee, let's start with understanding the Society of Don Bosco Salesian. The Society of Don Bosco Salesians is a Catholic religious institute of the Latin Church established for the purpose of youth education. Its main activity is operating school and technical vocational language instruction, and ultimately, they are aimed to soul salvation. It also runs parish churches, published some books, or participate in public communications activities. It was founded by Saint Bosco, who is also called Don Bosco. His motto, Damihi Animas Setera Tole, which means give me souls, take the rest, show their ultimate goal, soul salvation well. As written in the statute for the Salishin's operation, cooperators, they try to foster honest citizens and good Christians to ultimately save our soul. Salvations become the sign of Jesus' love in person to teach and deliver God's love, and through these salvations, teenagers experience God's love and response to his love by maturing into honest citizens and good Christians. In the Society of Don Bosco Salvations, there are three important concepts we have to know. The Salvation Spirituality, Pastor Love, and Preventive System. The first one is Salvation Spirituality. It is an internal and external guideline that Don Bosco's disciples should follow to guide young people to salvation, which is related to the mission God has given to Don Bosco. It can be divided into four parts, daily life spirituality, educational spirituality, community spirituality, and delight spirituality. Each of them explain how we can be with Jesus Christ, work for soul salvation, guide used to Jesus Christ especially in education part, is fundamentally rooted from the concept of pastoral love. Pastoral love is the main, one of the most important part of the salvation spirituality. It is the love associated with the salvation of youth revealed in Don Bosco's inner and outer lives. To understand the concept of pastoral love well, we can confirm the figure of the pastoral love. It states, in the Bible, the Gospel according to John chapter 10, I am the good shepherd, I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Pastor love is the good shepherd's love. We can confirm that the good shepherd is similar with the saying of Don Bosco. He says, he says love them so that they know their love. In the society of Don Bosco Salishans, each Salishan become the good shepherd, and the children become the sheep. Salishans lays down his life for the children, know everything about the children, and the children know that the Salishans love them, as the sheep did in the Bible. Because the pastor love is a love from God, a redemptive love of Jesus Christ, and we can experience and feel God through prayer, and the figure of Jesus Christ, good shepherd, we call it a sinner prayer. Moreover, because the pastor love is not only the internal activity, or not only just the love, but also the process in which love from God moves to the neighborhood and the realization of soul salvation and practice in accordance with evangelical recommendation, the pastoral love also contains the external activity. Now we will explain about the creator of the Salesian Society, Don Bosco, in detail. So he's a representative person who tried to practice the pastoral love in his real life and had a great impact on Father Lee. Next slide, please. He was born in 1815 in Piemonte, where the Salesian Society has been risen. In order to take care of the young people in rural areas in Italy and to raise them as an honest Christian civilian, he made a dormitory called Oratorio. And this shows the fact that he emphasized a family spirit and tried to make a family-like atmosphere within those young generations. After establishing the Salesian Society, he also further established the Salesian Sisters and the Salesian Cooperators. So this was a short biography of his life, and now we will illustrate how, we, how he actually practiced pastoral love in his life, which was ultimately through education. For Don Bosco, his goal was to properly educate his neighbors, who were the young generation mistreated under the extreme situation at that time. And Don Bosco's specific educational method can be said as a preventive system. So prevent in Latin refers to to start beforehand and therefore means the educators being ready to teach their students and setting an example for them. 
Don Bosco's preventive system is consisted of three major components, which are reason, religion, and loving kindness. Reason is to understand the minds of young generation in a reasonable way, and religion is to give them a mind to love the God. Lastly, loving kindness is to make them actually practice a love of God within the society. Through this, Don Bosco tried to motivate the young generation to actively participate in society with the love of God, not being alienated. The most important component that Don Bosco stressed out among these three was religion, since his ultimate goal of the education was to make them into true Christian civilians, and he thought that the most major person is someone who keeps his own faith. Eventually, he tried to become an assistenza, meaning an assistance in Latin, to the young generation, which affected Father Lee, who tried to become a person in the same level with the people in Sudan, not a volunteer who is just giving help in a top-down method. Father Lee shows similarities with Don Bosco in dedicating himself for people who are severely suffering. However, unlike Don Bosco's efforts to improve the situation in his own country, Father Lee left for Sudan to practice missions. To understand his motivations, it would be important to figure out the situation of Sudan. Here, I would like to explain the situation of Sudan based on their civil wars. To understand the causes of Sudanese civil wars, we need to clarify how different Sudan and South Sudan are from cultural, religious, and ethnic perspectives. First, South Sudan consists of 61% of Christians, 33 of indigenous religions that uses English, while Sudan, uh, in Sudan, 97% is Islam using Arabic. The first Sudanese civil war was a 12-year conflict between the northern and southern regions of Sudan. It was a war between the central government of Sudan and the South, Southern Sudan Liberation Movement. After Sudanese independence from Britain, the South was politically and economically marginalized. The South registered the North that was trying to impose their religious and ethnic norms on the South, and the brutal war lasted for nearly 20 years. The second Sudanese civil war lasted for 22 years between the central government and SPLA from the south. The agreement in 1972 ended the first Sudan civil war, but it was violated several times, enforcing Muslim Sharia law, suppressing Christian southern region. Sudan was a country that had a very complex relation. South Sudan held a referendum in 2011 and became an independent nation. After the independence, armed conflict between president and vice president of South Sudan led to civil war. South Sudan, where various ethnic groups live together, has undergone serious conflicts between the two. Both sides committed indiscriminate killings and sexual assaults against the other race, causing 3 million people to leave South Sudan. The results of the two wars were devastating. After the first civil war, 500,000 people died and 900,000 people were displaced. The second civil war has cost 2 million people's lives and 4 million people were displaced. One of the most devastating aftermath of the Sudanese war is the displacement of children. There was a group of displaced children called Lost Children of Sudan. 30,000 children aged 7 to 17 had to walk long distances searching for security, food, and education. While these children were moving from places to places, most of them died of hunger, thirst, and diseases. Another group of refugee children are the lost boys who sought security from Sudan to Ethiopia to Kenya. 74% of the boys survived shelling or air bombardment. 92% of them say they were shot at, and 97% of them witnessed killing. Todd Peterson, a journalist, claims that these children were the most badly war-traumatized children ever examined. The war was also a huge economic loss for Sudan, 
as the war has cost 2 million U.S. dollars per day. Therefore, the governments, especially the unstable governments of South Sudan, couldn't provide proper education for the people. In 2000, there were 2,000 primary schools established in the southern Sudan. Although schools were built because of poor facilities, inadequate supplies, and lack of qualified teachers, education in Sudan was very poor. Few hospitals which were built after the Addis Ababa Agreement of 1972 were destroyed during the war. During the war, diseases like sleeping sickness broke out. According to the SPLM, 90% of population in the liberated areas are either sick or suffer from malnutrition. Unfortunately, even after all this destruction, Sudan wasn't able to come to a peaceful state. The peace treaty between SPLA and the Sudanese government was signed because of the international pressure, meaning other countries or organizations such as Kenya, US, China, EU, and IGAD arbitrated in the dispute. It is, an, it is very notable that Italy faced similar problems in 19th century as well. After unification of Italy, the unstable society faced political turmoils. A lot of people faced poverty, needless to say the lack of education, and the tax rates soared, making life very difficult for the Italians. Father Lee has three big achievements in Sudan. The first one is medical services, the second is community initiative, and the last education of the young. First, in a large context, Father Lee's medical services are faithfully followed by the constitution of the Salesian Association. He helped people regardless of religion and wanted to reach as many people as he could. The Christian spirit of the larger flow of no one left behind is also connected as the number of people who can become Christians must be the right members of the Salesian Society as much as possible. Hospital, which is a basic infrastructure and basic water supply, wasn't provided in Sudan. Since these things can be changed by the workforce, Father Lee started the medical service. Father Lee's medical service can be seen as influenced by the Salesian Society, since it says the change from the fundamental system is important. Secondly, Father Lee's achievement as a community initiative can be explained with reaching out to the minority. Inspired by Don Bosco's pa pastoral love, he reached out to Hansen patients who are the minority of the society. In accordance with the pr practice of inner pastoral love, Father Lee felt that his first priority was to reach out to those who could have been children of God who had been swept away by the environment by the spirit of the Salation Conference. With a practice of our pastoral love, he came unbiased to the minority to practice love for a comprehensive people of God. Lastly, I am going to talk about the education of the young. According to the Salesian Society, education is, is essential for children to become effective members of society and Christians without being exposed to crime or violence. Father Lee wanted to build a boarding school similar to Don Bosco's oratorio. Father Lee set up a school to enlighten indigenous people. The school, which was started as a primary school, opened a junior high school and high school course in turn and established a new school building in Tons. Father Lee's achievement for the education of the young is truly inspired by Don Bosco's word that education is a matter of the heart. Father Lee lost his father young and grew up in a poor environment. He loved music and was influenced by music that it will enable him to go to the right way. He started using music for the purpose of treatment and found that music was a lot of help in treatment of war-torn indigenous peoples. The brass band was created in accordance with the Salesian spirit, which is based on the spirit of life that pays priority attention to the youth. Father Lee was great grateful for God's love for these talents, feeling that the barren children had musical talents while teaching them music. In order to understand Father Lee's actions and achievements and the motivations behind why he did these actions, we need to focus on the questions such as why did he go to Sudan, a, world, a country that is 
halfway around the globe when there are people needing attention that are near us at the end of the day. There are three main commonalities that we can examine when we look at the 19th century Italy versus the 21st century Sudan. Number one is that they're, they have collapsed socioeconomic livelihoods. The livelihoods of these individuals are absolutely devastated and these individuals do not have an industrial infrastructure where they can become a mature individual, but rather they succumb to criminality or violence at the end of the day. Secondly, the basic water supplies and hygiene and medical supplies and education, these basic, basic infrastructures are absolutely devastated as well. These absence of infrastructure make the need to restore these basic infrastructure absolutely important. For example, 70% of 19th century Italy and 73% of South Sudan uh, currently are, you know, those people cannot read or write and those infrastructures are absolutely needed. Thirdly, the reason why these happens is because the government isn't able to focus on the youth, right? Because of the civil disputes that happen between these nations. These people are, these youths and these children are conscripted and become child soldiers, which means that they are fundamentally exposed and they're perpetuated to, to the exposure of violence and these culture of violence that makes these individuals not being able to ex be exposed to values that make them a good Christian and an honest member of the society. So therefore, St. Don Bosco and Father Lee had two ways of addressing these problems. First was to address the immediate problems such as community service and uh, providing the livelihood, and secondly, providing the medical services. Right? Secondly, the way of long-term goals and achieving these long-term goals for the brighter future for these youths, as Don Bosco said that these youths are responsible for the brighter future of the society, is to focus heavily on long-term education. We can see that by when we revert back to Young Young's uh, presentation, how Father Lee's uh, boarding school system was very similar to the oratorios of Don Bosco. Therefore, it is absolutely essential to consider the salation influences of Father Lee's actions rather than to only consider Father Lee's actions as an action of a specific individual that was very, very special. This, by marking Father Lee's actions as an individual effort, is something very, very rude to Father Lee's intentions fundamentally in and of itself because we have to acknowledge that although Father, Father Lee made tremendous sacrifices and even his life to change this community. This, this was fundamentally inspired for his motivation to glorify God and the salvation values that he has learned throughout the years of his young age, right? But secondly, this is also important to not understand his actions simply as a volunteered idea, but he was also living the life of a priest or a, or a life of a father in order to follow the roots of the, of the God and his individual actions that he did every day was to reflect upon the, the life of God and Jesus Christ fundamentally as a whole. Lastly, these are the references that we have used for the presentation. Thank you.